G'day. Um, don't know why I said g'day. I'm not in Australia. I'm in uh, Wales. Um, and today I thought I'd just give you a quick introduction of how to focus a uh, tilt shift. Now if you've watched my uh, any of my previous vlogs you'll realize that um, I predominantly use um, the Canon 24mm TSC as for my imagery and the reason for that is I, I, I tend to go for strong foreground images and I want uh, and I but I still want um, the background um, the uh, the interest in the background to be uh, in focus as well so I want to get that that sharpness uh, throughout um, with a standard lens you can't quite achieve that um, even at uh, f11 um, you're still going to have um, some drop off uh, towards the distance if you're focusing on a close foreground um, and this is where the, the, the TSC really comes into its own now if you think about a normal lens you have uh, an image plane which is effectively your sensor and then you have a focal plane um, and that uh, that focal plane is the point of focus um, where uh, the, uh, the, the image is at its sharpest and either side of that you have a depth of field and as that depth of field gets wider it begins to drop off that sharpness does um, but you can affect the, the size of that that depth of field by um, uh, the size of the aperture that you're using but you'll never quite achieve maximum maximum sharpness um, on an image like this where you've got a strong foreground and a, a distant um, a distant subject as well now with a tilt shift Shift, what you're doing is you're tilting the lens you're tilting that plane at focus so you have your your image plane um, your sensor um, and then you have your focal plane uh, and you as you tilt the lens the focal plane does this um, effectively that okay um, and as you do that of course everything along that plane of focus is going to be pin sharp so if you've got a really strong foreground down here um, then your your um, your background is also going to be sharp and that and you can achieve that even um, with really wide apertures like uh, f uh, 3.5 um, now there's a, there's a whole geometry around it um, and it's called the shine flood principle um, it's worth uh, looking up if you really want to um, and, uh, and, and and that explains what's uh, what's really kind of going on um, but um, it's it, it's not without it's uh, it's not without its issues because effectively what you have is you have a a cone of focus as it were um, and you can affect everything uh, within that cone of focus um, and get this plane, this plane of focus coming towards you. Um, but um, but anything outside that cone, uh, up here or down here, um, particularly um, tall objects um, in the near foreground, um, anything outside of that cone um, ends up being out of focus. So so if you imagine, I could have my my rock in focus here. I could have the mountain in sharp focus as well. But if there was a tree five meters in front of me, which was really tall the trunk um, because that would be uh, still within the cone um, would be uh, in focus but as you get to the top of the tree it kind of comes out of the cone um, and uh, and ends up being out of focus so although it's closer to the mountain uh, closer to us than the, the mountain um, it would be out of focus so some situations are like that you can't really use a TSC and you have to go back to um, using a standard lens or just shoot in straight um, without the tilt on the lens and uh, and go for uh, use a techniques such as focus stacking um, but yeah anyway how do you focus this bugger um, right okay it's actually pretty easy um, especially these days since uh, cameras now have live view that you can zoom uh, you can zoom in on um, before uh, before live view you had to rely on optical um, and you weren't really able to um, to zoom in on a point um, it all had to be done by eye um, but now uh, but now we can we can zoom in so so we have to make sure that the lens is in absolute alignment to begin with. Um, we can zoom in and uh, to begin with what you do is you go to the nearest object that you want to be in focus and in this case it's the it's the rock down here. Um, now I'm going to focus the lens so that is in focus and I'm shooting at f5.6. Um, now because the lens is in alignment 
that's a really narrow depth of field that mountain is completely out of focus now um, now to bring that into focus what we do is we tilt the lens we don't touch the focus ring we just tilt it down and that adjusts that plane of focus and there we go the mountain is now absolutely sharp um, now what that has done um, is that has thrown the foreground back out of focus so I need to go back to the foreground. I go back to the foreground and see it's out of focus and I refocus it using the focus ring. Then I go back to the top of the mountain and that refocusing has thrown the mountain out but it's not quite out as much as it was before. Um, now I bring the tilt the lens back up and I am tilting it so 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 gently it only needs you know a quarter of a degree or half a degree or something like that in this particular case um, and that mountain is now back in focus that's thrown the foreground out of focus again but again by not as much as last time um, so what I'm doing is I'm kind of I'm, I'm refining I'm refining that plane of focus so it starts like this and then you do this effectively until you reach that point where it's sharp at both ends um, so now I've just used the focus ring to get that foreground back in focus and if I go back to the mountain I can almost certainly tell yep the mountain is still in focus I don't have to tilt it anymore um, so that final adjustment it was just just enough to bring the the foreground into focus but the background stayed in focus as well so now I'm ready to take my image now I was um, I, was, I had this open at 5.6 for a reason and that's because I haven't got my remote release with me and what I want to do, do is I want to get a, um, a 30 second exposure just to flatten out these uh, ripples um, in the mountain um, and if I did that today using my 10 stopper I would need something in the order of about a two minute exposure so, um, so if I bring it down to f5.6 I can achieve uh, a 30 second exposure um, and not have to resort to bulb and there we go yep yeah, it's um, pretty much spot on so uh, there we go ready to take the shot and that's how you um, focus a, uh, a tilt shift in these type of uh, for this type of image I hope that helped go and that's a 30 second exposure fuck's sake fuck's sake you're fucking shitting me I love that fuck off